Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the language Scala and how you declare and use simple um, variables for simple data types. Like I said, we're going to be focusing on the Boolean and numeric types. And on the numeric types, we have our character, integrals, integers type values, and floating point type values. And that was the same for all the language we've covered so far, except for like C and C++. Um, well, except for C. C doesn't really have Boolean type, and we saw that C++ just really had a type def and call an integer a Boolean. But still, it does have the concept of a Boolean type. In Scala, notice your type. The keyword here is uppercase B for Boolean, but the values are still lowercase through and false. Okay? This is sort of like the same in... Um, in Groovy, except Groovy allow you to use uppercase and lowercase, okay? In Scala, you have character, which is 16 bits, just like in Java. You have a byte, 8 bits. You have short, you have int, and you have long. Notice the type names. They are classes, just like they are in Groovy. Scala, it's, f it's a functional object-oriented language, which means that everything is an object. Truly object-oriented language. Now, the functional part comes in from something else, which we're going to look at later on, which is the support for higher order functions, okay? And functions as first class citizens. So, by that definition, Go is probably for a functional language also. But anyway, um, important thing is that in Scala, you cannot create primitive types like uh, int and so on that are not objects. When you try to create one, it's going to be an object. As a matter of fact, you can't. Um, because the only type that they allow are these classes. And it's not like in Groovy when you say lowercase i and t, it behind the scenes wrap it in a um, in an object for you. Scala just always gives you an object. But I still consider that boxing and unboxing because you're hiding um, the capabilities and so on of the primitive types that we know from math um in this class and we can see it all just like in groovy how we test and we saw that oh it is an object because there are methods on it we'll see the same thing here in scala all right and uh, your floating point type they are just uh, again float and double and similarly classes in terms of declaring variable scala has a concept of a value and a variable um though we're going to be talking strictly about declaring a variable, which are things that you can change the assignment or what they point to, the value they contain. Whereas when you do a value declaration, you're only talking about something that's similar to a constant in other languages. So for now, we're going to leave constants for another chapter and just focus on declaring um, variables. So in Scala, to declare a variable, you use the var keyword, just like you would in um, Go, and then you give the identifier, so that would be your variable name, and then optionally you can give a type, an equal sign, and an expression. Now the big difference between Scala or the difference between Scala and Go there is that Go, you do not have um, any colon between the identifier name and the type. Whereas in Scala, if you specify a type after the variable, you have to put a colon. So Scala, for people who know Pascal, it's sort of using the Pascal syntax here in terms of putting the type after the identifier, but then it's separated by a colon. Um, Go doesn't have that. So that's the slight difference there. Other than that, again, the specifying the type is optional. Scala is going to inform it. What I want to do now is jump into playing around with Scala to show you just how um, these types get inferred and so on, and how we can play it using the Scala shell. And so, so start up the Scala shell is just simply type in the keyword, the word Scala, the command Scala, and pressing enter. Okay, once the shell is loaded, you're going to be able to start typing your Scala code. So notice that you can type colon help to get help, colon Q to quit. But we're going to start off by just typing um, in expression. So we're going to type through, and we're going to see that our Scala shell respond with res0 colon boolean. So that's... Scala telling you that, oh, I've created a variable uh, variable for you called res0 to reference this value, and the type of it is Boolean, and that's the value. 
false and we can type true and enter notice if we try to use like a lowercase bool it doesn't work now let's try with integers so if you type 5 and enter you see that's an int and notice the capital i and t there um, if we could do the same thing with float with long um, with float i would double and of course if we want to assign this to variable we can just say var f is equals to like 3.145 for example and notice that get interpreted as a double if we want that same value to be a float we'll just append f to the end of it to make it a float sort of like no difference than what we were able to do in c c plus plus and even java where we could put like an l for long and so on um, age if we just type age by itself we get age as an int of course if we want it to be a long we could append l but if we want age to be a byte we're gonna have to say var age colon byte is equals to 35. now we also have short so we can say you know num colon short equals to some number now we are, like i said we have character and so a character remember is a numeric type um it's just that it's a number that's used to represent a printable character and so we can assign a number to a character and see its equivalent character that gets print out, printed out or what it should be represented as. And so if you want the character zero, notice you don't type the number zero because the number zero is an unprintable character. If you type the number 10, for example, as the value for your character, when you try to run that, you'll see that oh, it is actually the new line character. And we can tell because there's an extra line that's printed out. But then some of the other numbers below and above 10 are unprintable. And only until you get to like 40, well, exactly 40, then you get a printable character, which is a parenthesis. If you want to print out the, the character zero, you have to assign the value 48. Okay. If you want to print out um, one, then it's 49 and so on. I said that oh, everything in Scala is an object. Oh, we can see that here. By taking the variables we have created, um, typing a period after it, and pressing tab, and we'll see all these other operations that are or methods that are defined on that class for variables of this type. So now we can jump into our um, Visual Studio Code and copy our Java code as our Scala code, modify it, and then now say, well, what does it take for us to make this code run cycle of our Java code and all the other code that we had? And so we're going to remove um, a number of things to make this work. So I'm going to now start editing our previous Java example to be more Scala-like. And I'm not going to explain everything just because some of the stuff I need to do in r is to run sort of similar to how we had a um, typical Scala um, Java or Go application or something like that. I have to make this thing called an object. And I can't really explain it because we haven't talked about classes and object yet. So you just have to take it on faith that what I've defined here is one simple way you can write a Scala application that just sort of get up and running just as you would write a Java application with a class and then use some static methods. It's sort of a shorthand for the same thing. Um, the other things I'm going to do is because Scala already import many of the Java classes, uh, we don't have to do like system that out that print. So of course I remove that. And then we cover variables already from the command line, how our type variable types have to come after the name of the variable with a colon. So after we've done that, um, it looks like our code is pretty much finished here. It looks pretty much like we had before. Of course, it's not going to quite run just yet because there's one thing that is wrong with it. So let's try run it and see what happens. Mm. And of course it fails. And so the problem is, is that Scala does not give, even though it's using objects, it does not give them default value. Even though I say that D, for example, is a double and it is an object when it's use it, it's not going to give it a value. So we have to assign it a value. So if we go back and start putting in zeros or whatever our default values are, and we run it, we'll mm -hmm. see so, um, though it move on from that arrow. So we have to assign each and every single one of them a value, even for the Boolean. We have to assign a value. So, okay, so now our code actually runs because Scala is happy that we have assigned any value. But if we're going to go this far and have to must specify a value for um, each variable we declare, we might as well, you know, see when we don't have to specify the type, when Scala can infer it to save us some typing. 
So that's what we did. So on line 35, only when we want R to be a character with a specific value that we, we want to make sure that our 48 doesn't get interpreted as an int that we say that oh, it's a character. Or on line 37, we don't want um, B to be an integer, so we set it out the type of it as a byte, because otherwise it would interpret that zero as just an integer. Okay, so that's a quick um, rundown of declaring variables in Scala and fooling around with the Scala shell first, and then now writing our sort of Scala application um, to sort of compare with our other um, similar Go, Groovy, and Java application. And you can still, if you put them up side by side, you could probably still see that they're very, very similar. Okay, um, again, Scala and Groovy improves on Java and take away some of the ceremony, but I'll, I'll argue that our Scala had a lot more confusion too, but we'll get to that way later. Um, thanks for your time. Follow me on Twitter at Straversity1, Instagram Straversity, See you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Oh, and finally, sorry about the video being late. Work has been crazy. So uh, I just literally finished working. Uh, the time is, I had like a 14 hour day. Anyway, take care. See you. Bye.